Uh, we're going back to our Steve Dunleavy in Hollywood with some more True Life Confessions. This is a historic Man's Chinese Theater, and this is the equally historic Hollywood Walk of Fame, where the names of everyone from Clark Gable to Lassie are written in stone. Now, if there's a broken heart for every light on Broadway, then there are a thousand broken hearts for every name right here. Let me tell you about a beautiful, talented, and sensuous young actress who desperately wants her name written here, rather than on some boulevard of broken dreams. If ambition were made of gold, Tracy Ray would be another Fort Knox. It's something to conquer. It's a challenge I have inside of me. Nothing scares me. Fresh, fearless, but oh so frail in a town that gobbles up girls like Tracy in giant bites. Tracy's friend and fellow struggling actress, Heather Hensley, has seen it all before in Carbon Copy. Both Tracy and Heather have pushed the edge of the envelope in trying to survive while fighting off the devils who stalk this city of angels. I drove a 65-foot truck to New York to supplement my income. I've had water dumped on me in, you know, during certain tapings. I've had pies thrown in my face. I dressed up like a boy for one audition when they wanted a boy. Um, you never want to say no because they'll just pick somebody else. The way I see it, an actor has two jobs, looking for work and working. But well, the biggest job is looking for work. That's, that's what I'm always doing, searching for work. But I think these colors look really striking with the... You know, for the first the time, Tracy the gets the star yeah. treatment from one of Hollywood's hottest star makers. We all know the story of my fair lady, Professor Higgins, finding Eliza Doodle on the streets of London and working miracles with her. We got our own miracle worker. Steve Dunleavy has a modern-day version, a kind of pretty woman story. Only his Eliza comes from the streets of Venice, Venice, California. This is the neighborhood where Tracy Ray lives. It's about 15 miles from Los Angeles, but a million miles from Hollywood. Now, as far as making an image goes, she might as well live in Siberia. But suddenly, she's here in a mansion whose price tag could buy half of Venice. It used to be Carol Lombard's old house. It's now owned by the man who's launched more kings and queens of Hollywood than a deck of cards. Yep, you guessed it, Jay Bernstein. Country girl hits a home run, cliched Hollywood story. Uh huh, you bet your bippy. Her body is a temple, her face is an altar. But to be beautiful in the city of angels is like being an auto mechanic in Detroit. No big deal. When I first arrived here, I was kind of disappointed to walk into a room and see so many millions of gorgeous blondes. And there's no brunettes. They're calling for blondes that are five foot nine. And I thought, man, I should just probably get fat so I can be different. Being different, standing up from the crowd, that's crucial for any out-of-town actress who arrives in Tinseltown, as Jay Bernstein knows full well. There are more beautiful girls per square mile in this town than in any other town. And different than wheat, barley, corn, where, you know, you have a harvest once a year. Here they have a harvest every weekend. So we planted the seeds of an idea in Bernstein's mind. We asked the mogul of makeover to work his magic on Tracy. She's a striking young lady. I mean, she has a great figure, and, and I loved her eyes. Dusty Fleming, who often charges $2,000 a sitting, was brought in by Bernstein to give Tracy a whole new look. If I'm going to take her apart, her hair is fine. It's not that great a hair. We had to put some body into it by adding color to it. The way, the way Dusty plays with hair, you feel like he's a butterfly. Her eyes are a little too close like together, so we had to open her eyes up. If the energy's right and she has great spontaneity, I know she's going to click in this city. Good. <laughs> Speaking of clicking, Bernstein also brought in top celebrity photographer Dick Zimmerman for a glamour shoot with Tracy. Good, and a smile. Let's look the other way, and back that way. Go ahead. Okay. First of all, she's very fresh. Uh, she, has a, uh, she, has a, she has a very clean look, and uh, she seems very smart. Um, physically, she certainly uh, has a, a very uh, interesting look. She has great dimples. 
Next on the agenda are acting classes from former movie star Tracy Roberts. In other words, when you're reading for someone, it's good to have things happening out here. Yeah. Oh, God, this is going to be babbling on about me. And then the big moment, a rush to the dreaded Hollywood cattle call with Excellent. veteran casting director Gary Schaefer. Okay, ladies, uh, I want to welcome you here this morning. We're going to be reading for the part of legs. You could say thanks. Well, I don't need a woman fighting my battles. As far as you're concerned, I'm not a woman. I'm a cop. Tracy, right now, is auditioning for a role in the movie Neon City. I'm up for a lead, and um, this would be very exciting if I get it. If she does get it, it will have a lot to do with this man, Don Gurler, her agent. She's got to go 100%. Just like Marilyn Monroe buckled down and, you know, realized that it's not just a pretty face. She's got to get into class. And if she doesn't land the role? Catherine Hepburn said, anyone can act. I mean, gee whiz, Shirley Temple did it when she was four years old. So, you know, it's just a matter of getting in there. And if they don't want me, then they were just looking for someone else. And they'll be looking for me and they'll find me eventually. perhaps that Tracy soars above the fallen angel. It's a fever, Hollywood fever.